Okay, since now we know about the integers and floats, let's dive into the variables. So we cannot go on with predefined values all the time because we may want to change the numbers as we go along. Because why? Because maybe you need an input from the user or maybe you need an input from the internet. Okay, so you're going to download a number and store it into a variable. So we store some values into the variables so that we can reuse them anywhere, anytime we want and we can change them afterwards in anywhere, anytime we want when we try to code. Okay, so we are multiplying 0.5 with 3 in this case. Maybe this number will need to be 4 at some point. Maybe you're dealing with a user age number. Okay, so user age will increment in along the way. So we don't want to just write 3 or 1 or 1 million in a single code most of the times but rather we want a variable we want a value that we can store those numbers into and we want to change it or we want to reuse it in anywhere we want so let's do this what I'm going to do I will just um, sum 3 and 5 together and then later on let me mark down this and write variables in here and hit shift enter let's do this with variables let's say that x is now 3 okay and y is equal to 5 now whenever I call x I get the value of 3 in my code whenever I called y it will give me uh, the number of 5 so if I type x plus y it will give me 8 for example if I want to x to the power y it will give me 3 to the power 5 okay so as you can see now I can use x and y in the code whenever I want so I defined x as 3 in here so if I want to change this value can I do it of course I can now I can say x is now 4 and from this point on x is now 4 if I just say x plus y it will give me 9 instead of 8 anymore so whenever I change the value from that point on the value is 4 actually let's do an example about this let's say we get an input of radius of a circle from the user and I want to find out the circumference okay and as you know the circumference is 2 pi r the radius and how do we get the radius from user we call a method called input okay so if you type input and open a parenthesis it knows that it has to ask for an input if you just print okay uh, we used the print methods before right so it printed out something and as you can see it shows in green it means that it's a built-in Python function okay Python method so input is something like that and Python knows it has to ask for a user input in this case so if you say r is equal to input of something it will ask for an input from the user and it will just set the r value to the user input and whatever you write in here within quotation marks it will display as a message when asking input if you hit shift enter it will say r is and this is where the user actually gives the input for example let's give 5 and now r is equal to 5 now if I want to just multiply r to 
and 3.1514 for example and 314 is pi actually as you can see we get an error okay it says that can't multiply sequence by non int type of float so when you get an error what do you do you got the error message here right so if you don't know what this means what you can do you can copy this and open google okay and just paste the message here and hit enter and uh, most probably you will end up with a website called stack overflow and any other um, resources for Python as well let's go into the stack overflow and let me zoom in a little bit as you can see stack overflow is a great website where developers share the solutions with each other so you ask a question and people try to help you for free and there are tons of questions that are asked before so there is a pretty good chance you will find whatever you are looking for okay so for example i found out the same error message that we are getting in stack overflow and if you go down if you go below you will see it has six valid answers and people are trying to help each other and trying to um, make people understand the problem okay so of course you can browse the other questions other resources from Google as well and don't worry I will explain what this problem is in a minute but uh, for general programming purposes I really suggest you to look for Stack Overflow results in Google and try to understand the error message that you are getting okay so let's go back to our code and the problem is here is that R is not an integer or a float actually R is actually a string and uh, whenever a user gives an input it is stored as string a text we didn't see strings yet we will see in the next lectures but just know that they are basically texts okay so how could I know that if I had written type and uh, pass X as an argument it will give me out an integer okay so if you want to learn about type of some variable you will just say type x and let's for instance um, define our pi number 314 in a variable and if I type type pi it will give me float because this has decimals and x is 4 so it's an integer so let's try r in this case so if I just call r it will give me 5 but see this has quotation marks so this isn't actually an integer this is a string so if I type type R and hit shift enter it will say that it's a string so how can Python multiply a string with a float so if you want to just multiply Jack for instance with 5 maybe you can multiply it because uh, you can just write jack five times but you cannot write jack three and a five times three and a three point fourteen times okay so it doesn't make any sense so if I want to multiply x and pi it's okay because they are both numbers but in our case we need to make sure that five is stored as a number not as a text because we don't have capability to multiply texts by numbers especially with floats okay and we will see that in detail in the following lectures but for right now know that you have to store this as an integer and in order to do that I will create a new variable called R underscore int 
and this will be integer version of our R string. And in order to do that, I will just write integer R, okay? So this is known as casting. And if I call R int right now, it will give me five. And if I call type R int, it will give me integer. Now I have an integer and I can find my circumference in uh, that was my point in the first place, right? So now I can multiply r integer with x and with pi um, without getting any errors. And please note that this is known as casting. We casted the string to be an integer. So let's try to multiply all of this together and we get the final result. Okay, so now we have learned about storing values into variables. We learned about different types of um, actually numbers and different types of data structures and what can or what can't we do with them. Don't worry at this point because we're going to learn much more about them in the future but I just wanted to show you a preview. Now in the next lecture we're going to see how we can download and open the Python notebooks.